Howdy folks. Good morning. It's me, Manic Mark, coming to you from the Art Villa dining room this morning. Um, yesterday I mentioned uh, toaster collecting and uh, so I've got to thinking about uh, toasters and um, I just decided to have an informal uh, history lesson, present an informal history lesson, informal because, you know, the way my brain works and the knowledge is limited and I forget things, so it's just, <laughs> it's just what I remember right now, okay? Um, but it, it, I was going to describe kind of like a, a broad history of, of, of where toasters came from. I mean, the different styles of toasters, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to start with, hey, Bob. What's going on? Uh, why are you uh, holding that? Uh, I got an idea. That piece of bread. I'm gonna invent something. Uh, invent something what? Well, I'm gonna invent something called toast. Toast? Let's just start with the beginning because then I'll just go on as usual. Okay. The very first toasters, which I don't have any examples of because they're quite pricey, <laughs> have porcelain. They were made out of porcelain. The bases were porcelain, and there was a metal framework. And toasters are all, even today, they're made the same way. There's um, wires uh, that heat up through resistance. You plug it in. There's resistance. The wires heat up, and it cooks your toast. It's it. It hasn't changed. <laughs> so. Uh, so we'll go back to the first toaster. The first toaster had a porcelain base. Maybe I'll find a photograph. Maybe and put it up. Put it up. There you go. Maybe you're looking at a photograph right now. Beautiful thing. A piece of art. Okay. And that that uh, brings me to uh, comments on uh, um, um, style, trends, period. So. You know, you're coming out of like that sort of leftover Art Nouveau thing. Victorian! Victorian! Arts and crafts! Art Nouveau! Art Deco, it all blends together. I don't understand any of it. Thing and, 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 and the electrification of America, the 20s and the 30s. Um, and, and then into modern, uh, Art Deco, modernist um, style. And that's basically what I've got. I've got that, that narrow um, the, the window. Leftover Nouveau. Going Art Deco, sort of going into the 40s, okay, and I really don't have anything in the, in the 50s. I just, I, I kind of, except for Atomic Age, I start to lose interest, you know, after into the 50s, for the most part. Anyway, so you start with the porcelain base. And people, you, you have to put yourself in the frame of mind that when people were getting electricity, which was a wonder, marvelous invention, into their house, that the things that they bought were few and far between that ran on electricity. For instance, the radio would be in lots of radios here. I don't have one that I can just grab easily. but. You sat and you looked at the radio. So radios were designed so they were fun to look at, um, ornate, colorful, um, and they were expensive. You know, it's like it's like you buying a giant plasma screen TV. Have people over look at the giant plasma screen TV. So what you're looking at is the size. You know, like it's thin but it's giant. Look at the picture. It's the same thing. It's never ending. Yeah, toast. Okay, uh, what will toast do, and what does it have to do with that piece of bread? Well, toast really won't do anything, but the bread will be crunchy. Crunchy bread? Um, you mean like the kind that dries out if you leave it on the windowsill? Yeah, that's it. Something like that, but, but on purpose. I'm going to speed up the process. So people would have other people look at the radio. Oh, isn't that fancy? Okay. Well, that that quality of design, that that the color and the, the ornateness of the the period, the nouveau. Period.
period, uh, moving into uh, all sorts of items like ironwork, anything you had, okay, would is, of course reflect in, the, in toaster design, but also it, they weren't. They could have designers could have designed toasters that were just utilitarian, and certainly there are probably some examples out there I'm not aware of, but they felt it necessary to reflect um, uh, period design trends um, not so that, so of course they were competing. There's a wide range of manufacturers that were competing for attention, but people, because electricity was so new and they had so few items in their house, wanted fancy stuff, you know? Like, look at my toaster. Now, we wouldn't do that today to buy a toaster bring it into the kitchen, and I don't know, I wouldn't, you know, if somebody came in and said, hey, great, nice toaster, I'd probably like look at them like they're from another planet, right? But in the, in, in the, in the 20s and 30s, when you had, again, few electrical, uh, few things to plug in, the ones you had, you wanted them to be fancy, and people noticed them, okay? So that's the deal on that, I finally got that out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with some of the earlier ex examples. You'd be surprised. Again, I don't have the porcelain examples, but I have earlier, uh, and I don't have any, and they just had toast that just sat, and you had to pick the toast up and turn around, so it was like a radiant heat thing, okay? So then you go to um, two different kinds of toasters, probably three, but we we'll start with the, this toaster, which is a universal toaster. This one's not in very good condition. It would, it's a German silver. Would, I'm probably wrong about that. Let's just say, no, it's nickel. It's nickel plated, or was. <laughs> and there's no plating left. This is not a good example. Um, but it's a common example. That's why I'm, I, I brought it in and why I kept it. It's a common example of what's called a swing gate toaster. Basically, you put your toast in, the, top, the side and the top slipped in. And when one side was done, you could swing the door around this way and toast the other side and that was a pretty pretty cool thing um, appliance cord plugs in here you have mica strips running across it wrapped with a, a band of metal which cause resistance to the mica um, I should have looked that up there's it's an insulator I guess okay the mic is an insulator. Uh, yum. Toast is good. I like toast. Toast is yummy. And it's good. Medic Mark! Where's the hole? Where's the hole? Where'd you put the hole? I don't have the hole piece. I don't have the hole piece. I don't care where the hole. It, it reflects actually a, a sort of a simple, a simple styling for the period. Victorian arts and crafts, art nouveau, art deco, it all blends together. I don't understand any of it. But I kept it because I just like, I like that simple styling. Now, another swing gate I have, which is a little bit more ornate, is a Starrite brand swing gate. And it's basically the same thing. The, the swing part of the deal is a little bit different. It, the arm swings out and then the whole um, door turns around so you can flip your toast and it has um, stars stamped in the top uh, wooden handles but basically it's, it's the same it's the same thing uh, swing gate and um, the reason why I bought that and it wasn't very expensive is it came with this original box isn't that wonderful in pretty good shape all right so oh but these these can be had on eBay at any time, I think. The Universal model was very popular. There's a lot of them out there. Um, so you can, if you just want one, they're out there and they're reasonable. Now we go from the swing gate to flip downs. And these, again, I'm not a historian. And I'm just going to say that there's probably there's overlap. And maybe the flip downs came before the swing gates. I don't think so from what I've seen. But there's I don't know what the overlap is. 